Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. In this video, we are going to discuss about the difference between web server and application server. So in fact, not only web server and application server, because we have a lot of different flavors of web servers and application servers in the market. Okay, so apart from that, we are going to discuss about what exactly is the difference between uh, a particular web server like Apache HTTP, Tomcat, WebLogic, WebSphere and JBoss. So I had a discussion with a lot of engineers and not only freshers, even the experienced persons are a lot of times get confused between what exactly the difference between a web server and application server and what are the situations or conditions where we need to implement the web server and where we need to implement the application servers like Tomcat, WebLogic, WebSphere and JBoss. So I'm going to cover all of the concepts in this video. So to understand the difference between a web server and application server, okay, you need three concepts to be clear. The one is static contents, second is dynamic contents, and third is business logic. So let us take a look with the example. What is the difference between static contents, dynamic contents, and business logic? Suppose that I am running an e-commerce website, okay, and what exactly is there on the website? Uh, I will display a lot of products along with the description. And apart from that, I could have a PDF file, which is giving the more detailed information about a product, right? So which you can download from the website. Apart from that, if someone want to do any kind of a shopping, then I would have a shopping cart on my e-commerce website. From there, users can buy the products and then that means they are doing a certain kind of a transactions. So this is specifically called public content. So why we are saying it is a public content? Because this is specifically designed for the public. Anyone can access the website and can see the contents and can download the public information PDF documents, which is specifically related with the product. Anyone can access it, anyone can download it. So it can be defined as a public content, right? Apart from that, because I am running the e-commerce website, so I have my own organization. So if I have organization, then I have my internal policies, inter internal business functionalities, okay? Because I have a different internal departments, HR department, manufacturing department, supply department, technical departments, and I have my own business functionalities. And if I'm going to implement all my business functionalities from paper to computer, right? That means I'm going for the automation of all the functionalities. In that case, I have to implement certain kind of a software and codes. So what does it really mean software and code? So either I will use certain kind of a standard software for my organization. Okay, those are available in the market. Okay, or maybe I will go for the custom development of my business logic. Right. So that means I am doing a certain kind of a auto automation of my business functionalities with the help of certain code and by using the certain kind of a standard software, those are available in the market. For example, you have an ERP, right, for uh, for uh, different kind of a business entities. Okay. So whenever we want to automate the, our internal business functionalities, we will uh, we, we buy the ERP software and then we intern uh, we implement it across all our departments. Okay. And apart from that, maybe that there are certain functionalities that is not in line with the uh, uh, the functionalities that has been provided by my ERP software. So for that, I will go for the custom development of the uh, business logic. Okay, so that would be a combination of the standard software. And apart from that, there would be a uh, custom code as well. So okay, in, in nutshell, you can say that whenever I'm going for the automation of my business functionalities, okay, for my organization, then I have to implement certain kind of a software or maybe I have to implement a certain kind of a code uh, implementations. Okay, so this is called as a private content. Why it is uh, and business functionalities. Why it is called a private content? Because it's, this is a private content that is specifically for my organization. Right. I don't want to disclose this to the outer world because this is my own business functionalities, my own internal policies. So now when we talk about the complete scope of the content, okay, so there would be a public content and apart from that we have a private content. Okay, so public content is specifically designed for the public and it is available on the public domain which user can access over the internet. Apart from that, you have a private content and your business functionalities and code which is completely internal to your organization. So as I said, you have uh, the, uh, given, I have given you the example of e-commerce website. Okay, apart from that, we have a different departments across the world. For example, we have a financial institute, manufacturing, transportation, education, health, entertainment, agriculture. So every organization has their own internal business functionalities and policies. Right. For example, if I talk about the financial institute, a bank. Uh, the, what is the business functionalities of a bank? They have to open the account. They have to close the account. They have to give the loan. 
and then apart from that they have a lot of internal function business functionalities those they implement with the help of certain standard software or with the help of some custom development similarly if you go for the manufacturing department transportation education health they all have their own business functionalities their own way to work they have their own internal policies so again if they are going for the automation then they have to implement all the technologies either with the help of standard software or with the help of standard code okay so this is all about the content public content private content and business functionalities and let us talk about uh, more on the web server and application server part right so when we say that we have a public content and or even it is a private content or a business functionalities or business logic then for execution of your public content okay or you can say about you want your content to be accessible for the outer world for that you need a certain kind of execution engine which is called a web server and application server now what are the conditions when we need the web server and what are the conditions when we need our application server so let us talk about static content so it is also clear from the name the contents are static that is not going to be changed or not go going to be changed very frequently or you don't need any kind of a if else then and but kind of a situations for displaying of the content for example you have a static uh, content like text you have image then you have a audio file then you have a video file and then you have a html page you can take the example of a uh, news agency okay so for example if i take example of a uh, news website okay what exactly the content are there in the website you have a static text that is for the news whatever the news is there for that you have a static uh, text and then apart from that you could have image you can have the audio file or video file of the news right so that is called a specifically called a static content because that not going to be change you don't need to execute any kind of a business logic for displaying it over the internet you just you have a uh, text which has been written and placed somewhere or you have a image audio file or video file which you have uploaded somewhere that need to be displayed on the browser and that if you have a audio or video file that can be played with the help of your any video player if you have a image or text file that also you can display over the website so you don't need any kind of a business logic for the execution here right so all the contents are stored in the storage and that you want to display it over the web browser to the end user right and in a pre formatted form right so for that you need a execution engine that would able to execute the static content because these are all called called as a static content whether it is a text image audio file video file and 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 some more content that i am going to discuss in the next few slides so these are called the static contents and the execution uh, engine that you need here is for the execution of your static contents okay and that is called a web server that means <clears throat> whenever you have a certain kind of a contents that you need for the execution of the static contents that is called a web server okay now second is called the dynamic contents now apart from the functionality which i have explained in the web server if you want a certain kind of a dynamic content for example you have a database and you want to do certain kind of a transactions where your uh, business functionality needs to insert some data in your database or it may need to delete update or view the data from the database that means you have a database there you have certain kind of a data which is displaying over your website and user are doing certain kind of a transactions okay and that transaction may be inserting deleting or updating the data in your database this is called a certain kind of a dynamic contents okay and for that specifically we are talking about a java so for that you have a functionalities or you or or uh, or a programming language that you can say as a servlets and jsps so if you want to enhance your application with the dynamic contents or with the business functionalities where it can con connect with the database and can do certain kind of a transactions then you need a servlet and jsp so what exactly is servlet so servlets are the java program that run on java enabled application server so now here servlets or you can say it is a java program okay and why it is required when we need a certain kind of a dynamic functionalities where our business logic need to connect with the database for certain kind of a transactions so now because what i'm saying is that this is a java program okay so you need a java enable application server for the execution of your business logic okay and what is jsp so jsp is adding java code to html so if you want your uh, html code which enabled with the java code for execution of your dynamic content so you can club html code and then java code in the jsps okay which is called java server pages okay so these two technologies are specifically related with the java and if you wanted to execute any code which is specifically related with the java then you need a 
जावा बेस और जावा इनेबल्ड एप्लीकेशन सर्वर ओके एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड अ सर्वलेट कंटेनर और यू कैन ऑल्सो से जावा इनेबल्ड एप्लीकेशन सर्वर ओके सो सर्वलेट कंटेनर इज ऑल्सो अ नेम फॉर योर जावा इनेबल्ड एप्लीकेशन सर्वर विच इज यूज फॉर एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ योर सर्वलेट एंड जे एस पीज so now third is your business logic so first we discuss about the web server which is a static contents and then we discuss about the dynamic contents where you are uh, business logic need to connect with the database for certain kind of executions where you are inserting updating or deleting some data in the database for that you need a servlet container for execution of your servlets and jsps because that dynamic functionalities you can achieve with the help of servlets and jsps now apart from that you have a business logic so as we have discussed so far that you have a different kind of a sectors across the world and every sector or organization has their own business logic own policies and then they implement all those things with the help of standard software or maybe with the help of custom development cust of the codes where they execute the business functionalities right and all these functionalities why these business functions are required that is required for high availability scalability load balancing and failover specifically in the enterprise world where uh we have running a business which is scattered across the world we have a multiple stakeholders are connected with each other they are communicating with each other right for the executions of your business logic okay and for this kind of a functionalities for execution or development of business logic we use the ejbs which is called a enterprise java beans which is a concept of advanced java so enterprise java beans ejb is a specification for developing large scale distributed business applications on the java platform so if you need to develop the business logic of your organization okay so apart from servlets and jsps you need the enterprise java beans for the development of the or you can say for the uh, programming of your business logic okay and ejb is also called as a one of several java apis for construction of enterprise software so whenever we talk about the uh, enterprise world or enterprise applications okay there we develop the applications in enterprise java beans and when we have enterprise java beans for that we need execute the uh, a separate application server or you can again say a java enable application server which has the capability of ejb container because we are developing the business logic in ejbs so we need a ejb container so now we have three things here one is the web server which we use for the uh, uh, static contents second we have a bit uh, dynamic contents right which is uh, specifically for related with the uh, transactions uh with the help of database okay and for that we have developed the application in servlets and jsps for that that we need us a servlet container which is also called a java enable application server but third layer is business logic when we are developing the business code with the help of ejbs then we need a full scale application server or full scale java enable application server which has a capability of ejb container okay so for static contents you need a web server when we talk about the dynamic functionalities or dynamic content then you need a java enabled small scale application server why we are calling it as small scale because it doesn't contain the ejbs it has the capability is only web server along with that it has the capability of execution of your servlets and jsp okay that's why we are saying it as a java enabled small scale application server but when we come for the execution of your business logic which is developed in ejbs which need a high availability scalability load balancing and failover kind of a functionalities okay for that we need a java enabled full scale application server okay so we have three kind of entities here web server and application server and application server further we can divide into two categories one is the small scale application server and second is the full scale application server so here where the difference comes between the web server like apache http server tomcat and then web logic web sphere and jboss so apache http server is just a web server it has a capability only of to serve the static contents and second when we talk about the tomcat so tomcat is a small scale application server okay which is used for as as a web server as well as to execute the dynamic contents which is developed in your servlets and jsp so your tomcat can execute the servlets and jsp okay because uh, when we install the tomcat we need a java as well for installation of tomcat but when we install your web server we don't need any java because we are not executing any business functionalities but when we are installing the tomcat we need a java because we are going to execute the servlets and jsps which is a java based programs and when we comes to ejbs we have a, apart from the static contents and uh, and dynamic contents of servlets and jsps we have a business code developed in ejbs 
then we need a ejb container which is the part of your full flash application server like weblog uh, weblogic websphere and jboss so in that case we need the full flash application servers so now let us take a look uh, in the graphical way okay so for, for example we have a certain kind of a static contents which user are accessing over the uh, internet with the help of internet from the browser for that we can implement a web server where we can place our text images and video files and which can be displayed to the uh, end user with the help of browser okay for that we need a web server and if you have a uh, large number of user base you can have a multiple parallel uh, web servers in uh, parallel okay but now when we talk about the dynamic contents where your uh, application or your website need a certain kind of functionalities to connect with the database then your web server would not be sufficient for that one and for that you need a java enabled small application server okay and which also called a servlet container and for that you have a tomcat okay and apart from that from apache you have a open source version of a uh, small uh, java enabled uh, application server which is called tom ee tommy okay which is just a servlet container okay so that means when you have a web application which need the support of your servlets and jsps as well that means you need a certain kind of a support for dynamic contents okay then for that you need a small scale application server okay and when we talk about the business logic which is called an ejb then you need a ejb container apart from your dynamic contents or you can say apart from your servlet container right so for that you have a web server full flash web ser uh, application servers like weblogic jboss eap wildfly and web spare and this ejb application or this business logic may need to integrate with the certain cloud applications this may need to communicate with some different application across the world and enterprise world with the help of java messaging systems apart from that as i said it need the high availability capabilities right and then it may need the session management failover capabilities and the scalability okay and there could be uh, multiple database are involved in the transactions okay so that means th this is the <coughs> part of your enterprise world the functionalities are getting increased because we are in the enterprise world we have where we have integration with the multiple partners across the world and they are working all together at the real times right for to to complete our business uh, functionalities so this is called enterprise world and when we are in an enterprise world where we need a such such this kind of functionalities we have a multiple databases we have integration with the multiple applications like with the help of jms we have a session management capabilities we have failover capabilities load balancing failover scalability for that we need a full scale application server okay and in this part where we are we are showing that http call and rmi call that means if we have application which contain the static contents which contain the dynamic content which has the business logic as well like okay which is deployed on your full flash application server like web logic jboss or web sphere so you are die for for to execute the business functionalities which is developed in your java ejbs okay uh, your uh, your servlets and jsps can connect to your ejbs with the help of http or https call or maybe with the help of rmi call that is a direct call uh, from your thick client to your application server okay and you may need to have a jta or the transactions right uh, uh, where your application doing a lot of transactions which is uh, part of the distributed transactions okay and there you may need a connection pooling that means you need for performance enhancement you need a connection pools and data sources as well okay so for all of these functionalities you need a full flash application server so it now now it will uh, i hope it will clear to you what is the difference between a web server which is specifically designed for the static contents okay and then when we talk about a small scale application server for execution of dynamic content that is developed in servlets and jsps then you need a, you have a small scale application server that is called tomcat but when we have ejbs which need to execute in the ejb container you need a full flash application server where we have a weblogic jboss and websphere application server so thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for few more interesting videos